The scent of Snickers and ramen is in the air. That can only mean one thing. People are gearing up for their through hikes of the Appalachian Trail. In the spirit of the season, I decided to make a video about the gear that I used on my through hike of the Appalachian Trail when I did it a few years ago. In this video, I won't be breaking down exactly what was in my medical kit or the food I carried every day in my food bag. That'll be in future videos. But I try to touch on just about every other piece of gear that I use during my through hike. I'll also show the cost and weight of each piece of gear and then give a little backstory so you can decide whether or not it will be a good choice for you. For my rain shell, I used the Mountain Hardware Escape Jacket. The price here says $275, but I actually got this jacket for around $125 at my local EMS when they were having the sale. At 2 pounds 4 ounces, it's a little heavier than some of the other rain shells out there, but it's super durable and it kept me warm and dry for my entire hike. For my fleece, I used a Marmot Rockland fleece jacket. This fleece was warm, durable, and I still have it to this day. At night, I even balled it up and used it as a pillow. For the first two thirds of my hike, I used these Mountain Smith trekking poles. They were fine and did their job, but once I upgraded to Lecky trekking poles, I could definitely see the difference of using higher quality equipment. When I got to New Hampshire, I ditched the Mountain Smith trekking poles and upgraded to these Lecky Makalu trekking poles. They were lighter weight and a little more comfortable to use. For my pack, I used a Go Light Quest backpack. Before I started my hike, I had this pack for a number of years, and it lasted a good portion of the way through my hike. However, when I got to Virginia, one of the shoulder straps started to tear away from the body a little. I called up customer service to see if there was anything they could do, and they actually sent me a new pack free of charge. When I was doing research for this video, I found out that Go Light actually went bankrupt in 2014. That's really sad because they made great packs. Now, if I was going to buy a pack today, I probably would buy an REI pack just because they're around my price range between $150 and $200, and their reviews are really great. So that would be a good alternative to the Go Light pack mentioned in this video. When I started the trail, I didn't have a pack cover, but when I got to Neil's Gap, I decided I needed one, so I picked this one up for $20, and it worked fine. To line my pack and help keep my gear dry, I used a heavy-duty trash bag. This is a great gear hack that's effective and cheap. To organize my pack and help keep my stuff dry, I picked up three dry bags from Walmart. They all came in one set for about $10. In the smallest one, I put my medical kit. In the medium one, I put my cooking stuff. And in the largest one, I put my clothes. They actually held up really well, and I used the same three for the entire hike. In a future video, I'll do a complete breakdown of my medical kit. New Balance might not be the first name you think of when you think of hiking boots, but they make a great product, and my feet were really comfortable for the entire hike. I barely got any blisters except for when my feet were soaked in a downpour. When the boots finally started to come apart a little after 1500 miles of hiking, I called New Balance customer service and they sent me their newest style of hiking boots for free. Superfeet insoles help cushion your feet and also take some of the impact off your knees. At $50 it might seem a little expensive, but it's definitely worth the money. Dry feet are really important to me, so I used four pairs of darn tough socks. And as the name would suggest, they're a really high quality product. I used the same four pairs for my entire hike. Sock liners help wick away moisture from your feet and act as a barrier against blisters. I definitely went through more than four pairs during my entire hike, but as a base amount, I always had four pairs in my pack. When I started the trail, I used an EMS Solstice 20 degrees synthetic sleeping bag. It was comfortable and warm, but it took up too much space in my pack. If I were to do it over again, I think I would have gone with a down sleeping bag right from the beginning, just to save that extra space in my pack. When I got to Virginia and the weather had warmed up a little, I switched out my synthetic sleeping bag for a Deuter 40 degree down sleeping bag. It took up way less space in my pack and it kept me warm for the rest of my hike. The reason why the weight is an estimate there is because I don't have this bag anymore. For both sleeping bags, I used a Kelty compression stuff sack, and it worked great. The sleeping pad I used was a Thermarest Z-Lite. The combination of comfort, price, and weight make this my favorite sleeping pad. If you haven't seen my sleeping pad comparison video, I put the link in the description below. The headlamp I used was a Petzl Tika XP2. This is a bright headlamp and the batteries last quite a while. The stove I used is an MSR Pocket Rocket stove. At $39.95 it's a good deal, and at 3 ounces it's super lightweight. The stove is really reliable as well. I carried one and sometimes two of these medium-sized canisters to fuel my stove. 
Some hikers are fearful that they won't be able to find enough places that sell canister fuel on the trail. I found this not to be true. I usually only carried one canister, but if it seemed like a long time before I'd get to another outfitter or canister fuel seller, I would carry two. I used this Walmart aluminum cook pot for the entire trail. It worked out fine, but in hindsight I think I would have used something a little bit lighter. I used a standard size Bic lighter to light my stove or to light campfires. I kept a second one in my medical kit just in case. For eating, I used a lightweight plastic fork and spoon. Even though it's in the picture, I didn't have the plastic knife. For my food bag, I used a Sea to Summit dry bag. It did get a little hole in it at one point, but I used the same one for the entire trail. My tent was a Eureka Backcountry 110. At $135 was an awesome deal. I love this tent. I never got wet once in a rainstorm and it lasted me for the whole hike. At 3 pounds, 13.8 ounces, it's a little heavier than some of the other tents out there, but for me, the price and the durability are worth a little extra weight. You'll probably have trouble finding the Eureka Backcountry 1 tent because Eureka doesn't produce it anymore. But the replacement called the Eureka Midori is about the exact same cost and if I were to purchase a new tent today, it would definitely be that one. I think it's around $135 and the design is almost exactly the same as the Eureka Backcountry 110. For my ground cloth, I used a 5x7 camouflage tarp that I bought for $10 at a local discount store. And it worked out fine. For my water bottles, I used two 1 liter smart water bottles. The tall size and shape of these bottles made them a perfect fit for me because I could strap them neatly to the outside of my pack. I also carried a Platypus Plus 1 liter collapsible water bottle. I used this mainly just to get water for cooking, but I did use it a couple of times in particularly hot or dry areas just to have that extra liter of water with me. When I started the trail I used a Katahdin Hiker water filter for water filtration. It worked okay, but I found it to be a little heavy and awkward to use. At the 30 mile mark of the trail at Neal's Gap, I sent home my water filter and switched to Aquamira water treatment drops. These were light, compact, and effective. I liked them much better than the filter. The knife I used is a Victorinox One-Handed Sentinel NS. This was a lightweight knife and I liked how sharp it was. One of my fellow hikers I met on the trail only carried a pair of scissors because he said that's all you really needed on the Appalachian Trail. And he was right. But, like most people I think, I feel a little bit better when I have some kind of blade with me when I'm out venturing in the woods. Many of us through hikers were just big kids anyway, and nothing was cooler as a kid than having a badass pocket knife. Every day for hiking I wore an EMS Techwick short sleeve shirt. This is a great shirt and the price makes it a good value, but one thing about these Techwick kind of shirts is even after multiple washings they tend to hold on to bad odors, so I actually went through a couple of these during my hike. The pants I wore were EMS zip-off hiking pants. I went through two pairs of these because I split one when I stepped over a log in Vermont. I used them mostly as shorts, but it was nice to have the option to zip on the bottoms when I got to camp and cooled down, or on windy peaks. The rain pants I wore were Campmore Backpacker 2 rain pants. They were cheap and the quality wasn't great, but I only used them for about 100 miles of the trail before leaving them in a hiker box. Maybe it's because they were such cheap rain pants, but I found them to be pretty sweaty and hot. After leaving them behind, I didn't buy another pair of rain pants, and I found that I actually didn't need any. For a warm hat, I wore a Carhartt acrylic watch cap. I used it when it was cold or windy, and I slept in it nearly every night. When I started the trail, I didn't have any gloves with me. When I got to Neil's Gap, I ended up buying a pair of gloves, and I used them for my entire hike. They definitely came in handy on cold, windy days or pulling up freezing tent stakes in the morning. To protect my eyes, I wore a pair of cheap wraparound sunglasses. Also, to help shade my eyes, I wore an Under Armour stretch fitted cap. This hat also helped give structure to my rain hood, and if I turned it around, it kept the sun off the back of my neck. One thing I always had handy was one of my three bandanas that I had with me. I used them as handkerchiefs to keep sweat off my face or to filter crud out of water. I carried about 100 feet of lightweight nylon rope. I used it to lash my sleeping pad to the bottom of my pack and also to hang my bear bag. I included Gold Bond here because I used it almost every day. Most people would just include it as part of their medical kit, but I carried around the big bottle. It's a super essential piece of gear to prevent chafing, especially when it's hot and humid outside. In fact, at one point I considered changing my trail name from Smooth to Gold Bond, but that's a story for a different day. For journaling and notes, I carried around a single subject spiral bound notebook and two pens. I also had with me a cheap cell phone, cheap digital camera, and a cheap MP3 player. The cost and the weight are estimates, but it doesn't really matter because if I were to hike the trail again today, I would just bring my smartphone to replace all of these. 
For camp clothes, I had a Ghostbusters t-shirt, a pair of Adidas lined track pants, and a cheap pair of flip-flops. The two things I have to say about my camp clothes were I would never go with flip-flops again because I almost broke my ankle a number of times trying to get water when I got to camp. Next time I would go with Crocs or water shoes or something like that. Secondly, I have the price listed here as $35, but that just includes the track pants and the flip-flops because as far as I'm concerned, the Ghostbusters t-shirt is priceless. Last, but certainly not least, is the AT Guide. I had a different Appalachian Trail data book when I first started the trail, but once I switched to the AT Guide, I was happy I did. From the elevation profiles to the detailed town maps, the AT Guide is one of the most essential pieces of gear you can have with you on your hike. Thanks for watching today. Subscribe if you like the channel, and if you have any other suggestions of alternative pieces of gear, leave it in the comments below. Thanks.